Hi everyone. Introducing my do-it-yourself 2 degrees of freedom motion simulator platform geared for uh, flight simulators primarily. So here it is. Power. Arduino motors, the rotational sensor, IBT2 drivers, power supply, the seat, universal joint, side hook yoke, control box, throttle quadrant, trim wheel, the rudder trim, the Logitech pedals. It's just a beast. Alright, so hopefully we're recording and I'm demoing the motion platform. So I do have a road noise uh, function that I programmed to just generate random uh, bumps when the plane is moving and frequency and amplitude depends on the speed so let's remove the parking brake adjusting parking brake okay so let's start moving And also, the surge is mixed in, so when I'm accelerating or braking, I can really feel it. So let's brake hard. Oh, okay. And this was with a very low speed. So, uh, okay, let's just taxi to the runway and take off. So you can see when I'm moving. The rig is moving a little bit, not too much, because I'm slow. So when I'm taxiing faster, this will move faster, obviously. Also, when I use my rudder, it's mixed in as well. So oh, I'm moving in just like as I should be in real life. Okay, let's break. And taxi to the runway because we, we don't need a lot of runway. And by the way, this is my airport that I created. This is Ottawa, C Y O W, Charlie Yankee Oscar Whiskey. And they're going to be taking off. So let's see the flaps. Flaps set for takeoff. Landing lights on. I'm not gonna stick to procedures right now because I'm just demoing the uh, motion platform. Okay, so we're line up, braking. Let's put parking brake on so you can see the surge acceleration working. Okay, so maximum RPM, brakes off, parking brake off. And I can feel I'm accelerating, trying to keep a center line. Rudder motion mixed into roll a bit, so I can feel just a bit of sideways motion. Not too much. Okay, so keeping, keeping it on the center line, and I can actually feel the bumps. Okay, so it's safe to go, and we're up. Positive rate. Speed check, 89 knots. Here we're going up. And flaps. Going Gear up, up, 3 green. Turning off fuel pump. Climb at 90 knots. Speed check, 110 knots. Passing 300 feet. Flaps coming up. Climb speed, 97 knots. Okay, that's my voice attack profile, so uh, so let's see. Basically what it does is when I roll, it's giving me motion cues, so I just feel the acceleration vectors. Then it slowly straightens up, but it's also programmed to mix in a little bit of the leaning to the direction that I'm turning. Set fuel pump off. Setting fuel pump. Sorry, this was a bit annoying wine. 
so let's do a hard turn and I really I really feel like I'm turning let's do a right turn and I'm also feeding uh, low frequency to my transducer so I feel the vibration of uh, the engine and turbulence and gear and gear drag I actually feel it vibrating so uh, let's go over the pitch so we're going to pitch high and this is the full range and we're going to pitch down okay absolutely natural as if I'm sitting there so this is this is another dimension of essentially um, of realism pancake gaming is like you're just looking on the screen at the plane that you're piloting VR is like you're actually inside the plane that you're piloting but this is like you actually feel the plane you're piloting Okay, I think that's the airport. Let's see if we can put the line up and do a landing. So you can see. That the rig is really working. I'm flying like I'm drunk on purpose, obviously, because I'm doing this. So again, I have the real pitch position mapped into the rig but just a little bit because most of the feedback is coming through the acceleration I can feel just the, the acceleration force when I'm going up when I'm going down left and right I have also mixed in surge into pitch and sway into roll also I have yo as well mapped into that so I can actually feel the yo despite I don't have the uh, dedicated motor that does it it's just enough to feel it without feeling like you're rotating so okay here down flaps down Let's make a landing. This is obviously not the correct way to land. And I'm too low, but let's see what we can do. Obviously so this is not the correct approach. Not the right way to do it. But let's just line up. I got my beach approximately set up from landing okay let's make a purposefully hard landing so I'm not going to be gentle I'm not going to be gentle and let's do bed flare and Okay, and I can feel the touchdown. And now I can feel the bumps. Okay, so let's do the same thing again, but let's land on the field. Because that can feel really different. I was down with the center line, but with this runway it doesn't matter and we're up and I really did a hard pitch up just so you could see that okay gear up okay so let's find well we don't actually need to find the field just make a turn with the gear down 
and just land right. Landing lights set. Right on the airport grounds. Don't do this at home, kids. Okay, and I'm getting stall warning, which is correct. So let's just land close to the fire brigade. You can see that the land is a little bit uneven. Gear down. Let's see how it feels. And you're not supposed to break not to tip over the plane. So we just let it stop. This is actually not that bad because it's relatively even field. So let's go back to the landing strip and let's actually take off again in the wrong direction. Let's see if we have enough space. Okay, I completely shut down my engine. And it's up again. Let's do a short takeoff. And we are away. So I can feel the surge. Although this plane is not surging much. Let's see if we have enough space. Uh, okay, and I'm up, gear going up. And by the way, it's a bit jittery because I'm recording. Normally it's much smoother. Okay, flaps up, and we're airborne. Oh, okay. Okay, so let's see, do we have a good spot that's a bit uneven that we can land, maybe this one. The interior is flat as we know, so not much, well we can land on the road I guess. Let's go that. Gear down. Flaps down. Well, this looks like a like a good one. Just make sure we are clear the bridges. construction crane. Okay, let's see. Well, if I manage to crash, you'll also see how it looks. It can be pretty violent. Uh, down. Oh! Oh! Ah! <laughs> okay. This is one of what I wanted to show, show you. So this is like a crash. Okay, so here it is. Hopefully it's a good demo. And if you want to check out my airports, you can do that. Obviously. As you can see you can start from the hangar. And there's a completely functional hangar. doors opening so you can check that at flatsimulation.com and design.ca or in the uh, in-game uh, marketplace so see you around guys I hope you liked it it's running on Arduino just under this fan 
There's an Arduino uh, running SMC3 IBT2 drivers. Those are 12 volt uh, motors. The gear ratio is 50 to 1. I designed and 3D printed this uh, rotational sensor, so it's rather unique and interesting. I have several magnets uh, in a special holder right inside the shaft there. And on the outside holder there is a hole sensor, which is a magnetic field sensor, mounted inside. There is no friction, there is no um, alignment problem. And it works just fine, unlike uh, regular potentiometers that wear down really fast with this kind of um, situation. And the expensive hole potentiometers that uh, have to be aligned properly with the motor shaft. And that can pose some problems and some potential failure points that are really, um, you know, that can be disastrous. So I'm happy with those sensors. I had to modify the SMC code. To work with those because uh, their range and um, the analog readings that Arduino gets from them are a bit different from what was designed in SMC3, but it was an easy modification, so uh, so why not do it? Two relay switches. So if something happens and software protection fails, and the motor drives itself into the frame, the end switch is trigger the relay clause. So this is a double protection. So there's one here, there's one at the bottom, and two on the other side for the other motor. So those two motors are enough to give me both roll and pitch. By combining their uh, rotations, they pushing the seat tied to the simulator. So this is the Microsoft Flight Simulator and obviously I play in VR, this is on the screen right now just for demo purposes. So what I have here is the seat mounted together with the yoke and throttle and my uh, VR control box with dual encoders and pedals. This whole thing pivots on a universal joint, which I made as well. So let's start. This is power and this is a scaling potentiometer, meaning this can scale the whole rotation. So if you're just starting or you don't feel like moving a lot, this can be scaled. So obviously this is a Cytec yoke, same as Logitech, and it's modded with the rubber band mode. So it's completely basically free rotating. There's no uh, central point that it returns to. It feels much more natural. Uh, and this is my bear control box that has dual encoders. It has six dual encoders, which I made as well from the cheap single encoders and the 3D printer. And it has eight buttons and a switch. It has an extra trim wheel and the rudder trim or engine starter also connected to that. And it's an extended throttle quadrant from Cydec with 3D printed handles for Piper right now, but it will be extended more with, uh, you know, Boeing style levers, etc., which I'll print later. And probably another switch box and the gear uh, switch as well, and the Logitech paddles. So the whole thing is moving and it's strong enough to move me while I'm sitting on it. And the whole thing is powered by the HP server power supply it's 750 watt, 12 volt. So the software it's connected to, Fly PT Mover, it actually uh, is connected with the simulator and it's commanding the uh, motion platform to move. Now, I also have a separate amplifier here for my do-it-yourself vibration transducers. Those are the things here made from car speakers. There are two of them on each side, so I can have stereo vibrations and the touchdown left wheel and right wheel I can feel separately, things like that. And it's powered by the uh, SIM shaker with the sound module, which actually takes events from the simulator and uh, outputs vibrations. So let's just run a test sound and you can see what happens. So you can see it moving and I can feel everything that happens. 
while I'm flying. It adds a lot of immersion together with the moving platform. It's an unforgettable experience. It, it feels so real, it's scary. Okay, so you can see it working now. This is just left motor going to some random motions. Not its full range, but um, it's pretty much how it looks when I'm sitting in it. Although when I'm sitting it's a bit less wobbly because th there's my weight on it. So as you can see, the range of motion is actually not that great, but in VR less is more. You don't actually need the full range of motion, you only need motion cues to trick your brain into uh, thinking you're doing what you're seeing. You're actually moving that way. And it can reduce motion sickness for some people, although I can't promise that. Because when I was testing it, first time doing crazy things, I kind of got a bit car sick. But in normal flight, I feel it actually feels better and uh, less, less uh, motion sickness inducing. So you can see it's pretty quiet. It's, it's not loud at all. The motors are working pretty well. And you can see this whole thing is moving. And it doesn't look like much. But believe me, when you're sitting in it and it's, it's doing what it's doing now, it feels like a lot. Sometimes you feel like you're going to fall off your seat. So um, it's more than enough range of motion for VR for sure. And now you can do pretty compact rigs as you can see. Because you don't have to mount your monitors, you don't have to mount the whole cockpit around you. You just need your controls and yourself with the VR. So uh, those motors, while they're still powerful, they're not huge. And they're not really expensive. The whole budget for the build uh, is, um, well, around $350. Compared to commercial platforms that do more or less the same thing. And um, they cost... Um, around three thousand dollars with import duties and uh, shipping and everything factored in at least so um, I feel good about this one and also you know knowing that I build it myself feeling is pretty good using it now for my do-it-yourself VR control box okay so you can see here those are six dual encoders eight buttons and a three position switch so what happens is for example if I want to tune the radius you can see that I can tune the frequency I can tune like the uh, main kilo megahertz so you can see I can, I can tune megahertz and the kilohertz and I can switch between nav and com so I can switch megahertz and kilohertz as well and I can swap with the button here and back so this is nav and I can switch to com easily tune it and switch it works with analog radios it works with GNS 530 and 430 it works with G1000 and G3000 and uh, uh, G3 and X NXI, um, so basically everything. So it works with radio, you can see the heading adjusting, and it also works with analog gauges. You can see the course adjusting as well. And it, uh, in airliners, I can do the speed and other things. And this is the barometer, and it all works with analogs and digital in the same manner. It works with analog and digital in the same manner. Okay, it also works with GPS units. So I have most of the commands mapped. So this is the button that triggers menu, and it's working. Uh, this this is the zoom. You can use the zoom. 
you can switch between different screens you uh, you can use direct well there's no flight plan so there's no direct here um, this is the flight plan so obviously there's no flight plan right now but you can toggle the cursor you can okay so let's select approach let's select the airport you can use the encoder just like on the real one C Y O C OK, so that's Ottawa, enter approach this is just an example of how it works, but generally you can basically operate everything. Let's select the... Uh, okay, this is the minimum. Let's use barometer minimum so you can set whatever you want to set. Okay, and we can activate, enter. Yes. Okay, so you can see I can operate GPS for the most part, not all the functions are mapped, but uh, it's easy enough to operate in VR. I can do it by touch and feel, and you can see the shapes of the handles are different, and they modeled actually after G1000, so um, I can feel what I'm doing, whether I'm doing a course, like this is the course, or uh, sorry, the heading, this is the heading, or the course, or radios. This is altitude, right? And this is vertical speed, where it's available. And I can activate that autopilot, and you can see I can modify vertical speed and um, and the altitude as well, and activate altitude. So um, I can do pretty much most of the things that I need with this thing by default. This is a starter switch, magneto switch, so you can see it operates like that. And you can actually see, you can hear the vibration transducers working, and the seat was moving a little bit just because of the vibration. So obviously we don't have everything set properly, so if we start the motor now, You could see that the seat is moving a bit, and the vibration vibration transducers are working. So this is motor vibration, and I think I'm rolling. I'll set parking brake, and you can see it's dipping and getting back. So it means the plane has stopped. So now there's only vibration from the motor. So you can see that working, but if I click it it becomes rudder trim. Well, there's no rudder trim on this plane, there's the other one trim. And obviously there's a trim wheel, which you can see is working, although it's not as slow as in real life, but it's really, really convenient to dial in the precise setting this way, while in VR. So the simulator is running on this PC, which is quite a good one, in a very well ventilated box. So it has the EVGA RTX 3080 card, which is one of the better 3080s out there, and uh, 850 watt power supply. It has a liquid cooled. AMD Ryzen 5900X CPU overclocked and um, 64 gigabytes of overclocked RAM which needs some additional cooling as you see and I'm pretty happy with the rig although obviously still needs tuning because you can't have two power PC for the simulator so uh, 
a few words about the vibration transducers setup. I'm using voice meter banana to route everything. As you can see, the main output, which is A1 here, is my VR. The simulator is routed into that. Then the simulator is also routed into A2, which is a, a separate audio output for the vibration transducers using the motherboard built-in audio. That one goes through EQ which basically has the high pass filter on so only the low frequencies up to about 80 um, hertz pass through the vibration filter so this feeds the similar audio into that so all the low frequencies from the sim go into vibration transducers but on top of that I'm using as I told you I'm using the sim shaker with the uh, sound module so that thing So that thing actually feeds specific sim events into uh, the vibration transducers. So I can feel violent movements like uh, turbulence and um, violent control movements, gears lowering and even the turbulence from the gear down. I can feel ground shake, even the seams in the, uh, you know, um, um, and the tarmac, in the concrete seams and the frequency rises as I uh, speed up and uh, on top of the motion cues it creates a very realistic picture so it's mixed up with the simu mixed in with the simulator audio and i have another channel here for all the radios so for example pilot to adc it's an adc control software uh, will output its audio to here so because it use, uses windows uh, text to speech Microsoft text to speech it's um, you know not great uh, and this thing will actually make it sound much closer to a radio because basically it's a notch filter it cuts all the high end and low end also I use voice attack which um, I use the voice attack profile for Microsoft flight simulator that's available now a little joke here so I got everything edited here. I got all the checklists, all the commands, everything that, that basically I can do inside the simulator. I can just ask my co-pilot to do it, including uh, using the in-flight ATC. Uh, for example, I can say acknowledge and it selects the first option in the ATC and acknowledges or you know, communication. Or This is very useful. So voice coming out of this one in response to my commands also comes through the EQ here, right? So this is the ra radio sounding EQ. And so it, it has its own audio device, which uh, Pilot ITC uses. And then it's fed to this B1 channel, which has this EQ, and then to the main audio that I get in uh, my VR. So as you can see, it's moving pretty smoothly and uh, it works. That's what you need, right? Okay, if you have any questions, give me a comment, like the video, and you can get my airports that I used in this demo uh, at uh, flysimulation.romandesign.ca. The description is in the link. Thanks for your attention.